All right. Once you're finished, you you can explore the uh, materials if you like, or if you can, if you want, you can continue working on them, or whatever. I think I'm done with this. I'll probably export and then uh, show how to set up materials in Blender. Okay. So to export the textures, what you want to do is hit File, Export Textures, Output Directories, select where you want to uh, save the textures to, Output Template, click the drop down, and then you can create your own one, uh, which is what I've done, or you can use one of the presets, such as Unreal Engine 4 Pact, uh, Unity HDRP, uh, PVR Metallic Roughness, stuff like that. Alright, so I'm going to use my one. I'm going to show you what it is. So, base color, roughness, metallic, normal, and emissive. We're not really using emissive, so we can ignore it. Um, if you want to set it up uh, as I did, you, you can. Uh, right, so because we don't want the emissive, we can click on the actual material and then just deselect emissive. And click back to global settings, make sure all the settings are fine. File type based on output, so it's going to be PNG. Size based on the textures set size, so it's going to be 4K. Padding, whatever, usually leave as it is. So once all that is set, just click export. And then exports. And we're done. Gonna save minimize. Okay, so we're back in Blender. What I'm gonna do is quickly duplicate the low poly collection, disable low poly, call this uh, render. We can select all the objects, shift select the frame, control P to parent, keep transform. Also quickly adjust the uh, the origin point of the the frame. So roughly rotates around the center of mass. Alright, now to add the materials, we're gonna go on to the shading tab. As you can see I've already had the materials set up to test, so I'm gonna remove those. This is essentially what you're going to see. Principal shader material output on your material. And so grab your textures and then drag them in. Drag and drop them into the node uh, the node window. So the, the base color, we can just plug the color to into base color. Uh, minimize that. So go to material preview. So you're going to disable HDRA. So here's the base color enabled. Now, for the rest of the maps, you can also drag them in, but you do, before plugging in or after plugging, doesn't matter when, uh, you do need to change the color space to non color. By default, it's going to be sRGB. So just click the drop down and then set it to non color. Uh, so the uh, Blender knows that it's not meant to be a color map. I click the roughness as well, so the roughness as well should be non-color. And finally the mat, uh, the normal map should also be non-color. Everything else, uh, diffuse map, albedo, uh, emission, those can be color, that's all fine. But everything else you want to keep non-color. Alright, so once we've imported normal, uh, we do need to invert the green channel. So we're going to separate color. Combine a color back in. So red and blue goes back in normally, the green. We're going to invert. Then we're going to create a normal map. Plug that into color and then plug this into normal map. And there it is. The normals, the textures look all fine. Of course, you can change the HDRI to whatever you prefer. And that's that. So the materials are set up. I'm gonna set up a very quick uh, render scene. I'll show how to how I usually render. So I'll go back to layout. I'm gonna do something simple. Just gonna create a plane. Scale it up. If you want, you can. If if you're gonna do high angle shots, as you can see, you're only gonna see the the floor. You, 
you don't really need to add walls or edges, but if you're going to do like a, an angle like this, you, you're clearly going to see the, uh, the background. So I'm just going to extrude this upwards and give it a nice bevel, shade smooth. So now if we were to, for example, render it like this, we wouldn't see the, uh, the infinite void of Blender. I'm going to quickly go back to shading, give the ground new material. The floor. No, no point really adding any nodes. We can just adjust the uh, the basic stuff. Uh, can give it some roughness, reduce specularity, make it dark. If you want a reflection, that is. If you don't want a reflection, you can increase roughness. I think I might for this one. All right. <clears throat> also, because the HDRI will be obscured by this object, we can disable its shadows. So we go to visibility, revisibility, disable shadows. Right now I'm gonna set up a very basic um, presentation for the gun. Nothing fancy. I'm going to create a camera. I'm going to Alt G and Alt R to reset position as uh, rotation, then I'm going to RX 19. Uh, yep, RX 90. RZ 90 as well. And there's a camera. Uh, in your case, it will most likely, the, the render resolution will most likely be 1080p, uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you want, you can increase it to whatever resolution you want, or you can just hit times two to increase it to 4K. Uh, we can hit the camera settings to adjust the uh, the field of view. Also, we can hit numpad zero to go into camera view, and then our material preview. Quickly uh, rotate the HDRI to something like this, perhaps. We can adjust the field of view. I like to use 250 millimeters, which translates to roughly eight degrees in field of view. Right, so this kind of angle is decent. The lighting is okay. Uh, I usually rely on the HDRI. Uh, also, if you are going to be rendering in cycles, if you're not going to be rendering view, so for example, just just a quick little uh, thing. So you, you can render this as is at any resolution you want. In this case, it will be 4K. Uh, so you can go to view and then viewport, render image. Hit render image, it's just going to upscale it. And this is pretty much what you see in, in the viewport, uh, real time render. But if you were to hit F12 to actually render the, the image, uh, I, I have it currently in cycles. Uh, if it was in, in EV, it would pretty much do the same thing, just quicker. Uh, so, as you can see, it's completely different lighting. Most likely, in your case, there will not be any lighting. So, I'm going to quickly cancel that. And I'm going to show you how to set up and change the lighting for your render. Right, so for the sake of simplicity, um, I am going to use EV. As you can see, I already have a couple settings on. I'm going to turn them off. So. Normally, these this this is how your settings are. Uh, you can enable ambient occlusion to add some darkness to it. You can enable bloom to add some shine. You can enable screen space reflections, which is also works nicely. You can fiddle with the other settings if you want. Uh, color management, also I forgot to mention. Uh, this is usually it's like this. I do have uh, color management this. Uh, settings as display device srgb view transform standard and look i put it's a very high contrast so more details pop out you can fill up with more settings but i tend to not all right so now to adjust the uh as you can see so if we're in material preview this is what we see but if we go to render view this is completely different lighting but as i said most likely in your case uh, it might be like this, 
but if we hit render, it's still different. So we're going to tick the scene world and the scene lights. And then we're going to go to shading. And uh, here in the node view as object, we're going to set it to world. And here I, I've already set up the uh, my uh, HDRI, but so what you want to do is I'm going to move this off, take this off. So this is what you'd have normally. You can create an uh, environment texture, pop that in. I'll quickly go to render view here. So because there's no environment texture selected, uh, it's going to be pink. To select it, we can, you can go to your Blender's root install folder. In my case, it is local disk C, program files 86, uh, Steam, Steam apps, common, Blender. Then you select your version, in my case it's 3.6, then data files, studio lights, world, and you should have all of your HDRIs here. I do have some of the Substance Painter HDRIs, because uh, I do like them a lot, so I'll probably try and use one of those. Uh, probably Studio 6, let's see how that looks. It looks decent. Yeah, it looks quite good actually. Um, all right, so if, if we want to rotate it, we need to add a a new node called mapping, connect into vector, and also we need another uh, node called texture coordinate. Take the generated and plug that into vector. And now we can uh, increase the Z rotation to rotate the HDRI. You can also rotate it in any other way, doesn't matter. But usually how you the HDRI is rotated is on the Z. So here, you can try to find a, a nice, nice angle for light. You can even change your studio lights. Okay, I kind of like this, the look of this. So the nice, there's a, a really nice rim light here, you can see, as you can see. Although you can't see that many details, uh, reflection details on this side. So what we can do is create a sunlight. Position it somewhere. And then kind of aim the sunlight at the, uh, at the side of the gun. Or you can just... Um, Rotate it manually. And as you can see, the sunlight is being obscured by the uh, the wall here, so we can just rotate it by 90 degrees. Alright, now we're going to adjust the, uh, the light, so it hits the side. And then with the light selected, we can hit this light icon. Uh, lower the uh, strength to something, perhaps 0 0.1, 2, 2.5 maybe quite low. Um, I'm going to try capture the shine of these flat diamond bits on the grip. And there you go, something like that. Point 0.1. That's nice. Here you can see the angle. You can increase the angle to um, make the light less sharp, I guess, you, you could say. So for the highlights, I, I like to keep the angle very low. And I'll probably duplicate it and then increase the angle a bit more, and then increase the strength. Alright, so there's this. It looks uh, a bit too rough, I, I would say. Um, so what we could do is quickly jump back into Substance Painter. Uh, quickly go to the plastics. I'm 
I'm gonna turn down the, uh, the dirt. So it's less intrusive. Also gonna adjust the, uh, the fingerprint strength. So it's slightly more subtle. I think the grip is fine for that. Uh, the plastic bits, the metal bits may need a bit more adjusting though. So I'm going to take the base, make it more rough. I'm just going to add a little bit of a little bit of leaks on on top, just to break up the surface. So this. Slightly more vari uh, roughness variation. Right, and then we're going to hit re export. File export textures. Export. Okay, it's done. So Blender doesn't automatically re import the textures. You, you so you have to save and then reopen the file. And when you reopen the file, then it will re import the textures. You don't have to mess with the the nodes, you don't have to replace them, it, it pretty much does it on its own. So we're going to go back to render, as you can see it's way more rough. Alright, so once we have something that we like, we can go and render. So we hit F12, because this is EV is going to render really quick. As you can see, here's the effect. The surface is quite, um, quite rough, we can probably adjust a bit. You can also adjust the, the contrast levels. Right, if you want to use uh, cycles to render, uh, you can enable it here. So switch from EV to cycles. Uh, rec I recommend using experimental and change your CPU to GPU compute. If you do not have this, you can go to edit preferences. And then on the system, you select CUDA and then select your graphics card and then save your settings. And then you should be able to change it to GPU compute. Uh, so you can change settings, but I usually keep it normal as it is, whatever the standard is. But I do go, to down, uh, I do go down to performance and enable tiling uh, and do reduce it to something like 512 or lower if you want so it, instead of rendering a huge chunk uh, of the of the render it, it breaks it down into little chunks that it renders bit by bit and like tiles it up together i find that this is safer more efficient uh back in the day when i used to render large uh super large resolutions at huge chunks um pretty much blender would crash and <laughs> wouldn't render. So you may want to use lower tiling if you have a weaker system. Uh, you can also go down to color management, of course, suggest the, the very high contrast, very low contrast, whatever you like. And then just have to alter render. All right, and there's your render. So this is the end of the tutorial. You should be able to take the model and textures to a game engine and use it. Thank you for tagging along through these videos. It turned out to be longer and more difficult than I expected, but I do hope that you found it useful or learned something new. If you have any questions, do leave a comment. I'll try my best to reply to them. Alright, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.